everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. Today I'm going to show you how to make yarn out of fabric. I'll be demonstrating using leftover pieces of fabric from my fabric stash. This is some quilt cotton. But you can also make this kind of yarn out of really, really big things like bed sheets or really, really small things like kerchiefs. Thin fabric is the best fabric for turning into yarn. It's just easier to manage and it's a lot easier to cut through. Basically, you're looking for something about as thin as a bed sheet. I'm going to show you how to cut it up in two different methods. So one using an extra fold for efficiency of cutting. And if that's a little too much for your scissors or for your hands, I'm going to show you another way to do it. So two different ways to fold and cut. You can roll it into a ball or if you're using a yarn winder, if you have a yarn winder in your stash, you can roll this up on a yarn winder. I did that with my yarn winder. And I recommend that you take it slow if you do and make sure that your strips are no wider than two centimeters or about three quarters of an inch. What's this yarn good for? Well, among other things, baskets and rugs. Things that need to be strong and utilitarian, but can kind of look cute with that scrappy effect. Keep in mind though, if you're going to crochet, you're going to want a big hook. And if you're going to knit, you're going to want big knitting needles. Both of those would be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 9, 10, or 11 millimeters. For crochet, you're going to get around 8 single crochet to the yard. For knitting, maybe around 10 or 12 regular stitches to the yard. There are other kinds of fabrics you can turn into yarn as well, like t-shirts. In fact, we have a tutorial on how to turn a t-shirt into yarn, which we'll link in the description box down below. So after today's tutorial and you finish turning your old curtains into a ball of yarn, maybe you'll start eyeballing your husband's t-shirt collection. <laughs> All right, let's grab our fabric scraps, grab our scissors, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will make ourselves some scrap fabric yarn together. To make your fabric yarn, you really can use any scraps of any size that you've got lying around. I've got the remnants of some fat quarters from some quilting projects. And you need a pair of scissors, nice and sharp, preferably that can sh cut through it folded four times. But if that's just too much or it's too hard on your hands, then you can just fold it once. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a moment. But a nice sharp pair of fabric scissors. And this is a nice to have, but not a need to have. Just a little measuring tool, whether it's a measuring tape or one of these little measured boards, just so you get an idea of how far apart you want to make your cuts. You're aiming for about two centimeters or just under an inch but you can eyeball it. So this is not something where you've got to be technically perfect with your measurements. And once you've got some scrap fabric and a pair of scissors, we can start making some yarn. First, you're going to take your scrap piece of fabric and you're going to find your two salvages. These are the ends where maybe there's a little bit of printing on it. It's kind of the part of the fabric that keeps it from wanting to unravel. It's usually at the top and the bottom. You're going to cut these off because they're not particularly pretty. And uh, we don't want that as part of our yarn. Now, what do you do with these? Well, if you're like me, you just put them aside and you use them for stuffing for little things like amigurumi. These actually make really great stuffing. All right, you're going to take your piece of fabric and you're going to make sure that your two edges, the top and the bottom piece, so if you're looking at your whole piece of fabric, no matter how big it is, you take your two ends the long ends or the short ends so that you've got the long length of your fabric folded in half. Take your short ends, make sure they're as perfectly aligned as you can make them. If they're off a few millimeters, it's no big deal. Then maybe lay it flat and holding those two edges, just flatten your fabric. If you want to be really specifically perfect about this, then you can go ahead and iron it, but I don't see the point of that. This is after all going to be kind of a scrap yarn. Then you're going to take the bottom fold and you're going to fold it up close to but not near or too close to the top edge and again sort of like smooth that down make sure that you don't have too many wrinkles or it's mostly flat so this is your two top edges this is the open edge and the other open edge they're perfectly aligned then you've taken the first fold and you've folded it back up and you've placed it about two and a half centimeters or an inch just south of that first fold line where your two open edges are together. We're going to cut and we're going to cut through this fold but not through the top open edge. And it's going to look like this. 
if you want to have your measuring tool handy, you can lay it down on top of your fabric. This is also a nice way to kind of just hold it in place as you make your initial little splits across the bottom. You could use a measuring tape, but basically what you're doing is you're going for about two centimeters or an inch, just under that, and you're just do this a couple of ways across the bottom just to kind of give you an idea of where all of your slices are going to be. So you can do that all at once or you can do that as you go. I also like this because it kind of keeps it flat. Then I recommend holding the edge so that all four of those pieces of the fold are together. Very carefully just cut straight up. If you've got a rotary cutter and a fabric cutting board then this would be even quicker but you don't need that. And uh, if you're dealing with smaller pieces like this, then just working with a pair of scissors is fine. If you have to move it, try to move the whole thing together. And try not to mess up your folds. When you get up to the top, you're gonna snip right up and over top of that first fold that you see, but you're not gonna cut all the way to the end. So if you see that I've got this it's not completely severed. So this little fold is, but the top two raw edges, that fold is not. It's very important that you do not cut through this upper line, line up here because this is how we keep it all continuous. All right, then you just sort of move your little measuring thing over or you just eyeball the next two centimeters or the next three quarters of an inch or however sort of wide you're making your stripes or strips. They don't have to be very wide at all. And then just very carefully, same thing, cut all the way up. You might want to try pinking shears for this too. That could be kind of fun if you have pinking shears. Cut all the way up. I'm going to get this one out of the way. I'm going to make sure I cut over this little flap. but I don't cut all the way to the end. So I like to hold it because if that feels a little bit stiff to cut through, you wanna have as much control over cutting through that last little layer of four as possible. You don't wanna snip accidentally all the way out to the end. And then this one's cut. And again, it's still anchored up at the top. I have not cut all the way through. And you're just gonna repeat that all the way across. I have finished snipping my way across the width of this fabric piece. I made sure that each of the that secondary fold I made, they were all snipped across, but none of them have been snipped all the way through to the end. So if you see, if I pull this apart, you'll see that my top two open edges that were the first fold, I did not cut through those by accident. All right, let's turn this whole thing around. You're gonna grab that first folded edge and you can now let that second folded edge go all the way to the end. I sort of like to shake it out like this. It's much easier to see now. So this looks a little bit like an octopus. It doesn't matter how many cuts you have, whether it's an odd number or an even number. And if that first or second um, strip is a little bit wide or a little bit skinny, that's okay too. You're just sort of eyeballing a general similarity in width all the way across. The most important part is that you haven't accidentally cut through this. This is what makes the whole thing um, unbroken. Now, if you did accidentally cut through it, I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. <laughs> but first, we're gonna peel this apart gently so that you can clearly see that there is a back and a front or a top and a bottom to those two pieces, those two sides. We're gonna focus on this top part first. This is how we snip to make it one continuous piece of yarn. That first slice, we're going to snip. We're gonna bring it all the way to the end now. So that first piece, single piece, it's now snipped. Still looking at that top piece, we're gonna skip one and go to the second slice and now finish that out to the edge. So now we have two that are still joined. So we snip the first to be single, we have two that are joined. Still looking at that top piece, skip the next one, find the second slice, and bring that one all the way out to the edge. So now we have another one that's still joined. 
and the same again. Skip one, find the second one, and snip it. Now, if you've got, if you end like this, or you end with just one, it doesn't matter because what we're gonna do on the other side is gonna be the opposite. So if this is a double, this one will be a single. If this one ends up being a single, this one will be a double. So it's perfectly all right. Like I said, it doesn't matter how many slices you have. Because we started on the top layer by snipping the first one, we want to do the opposite now. So instead of snipping the first one, we're going to skip the first one, find the second one, and snip it. Snip. And now it's the same. Skip one. Snip one. And this will be the opposite to the top. Skip one. Snip one. Skip one. Snip one. And this leaves us with a single one on the other end. So whether you ended with a single or a double up on the top piece, doesn't matter. It'll be the opposite as you finish. Then you just want to start, find one end or you don't know, use the last one you snipped up and just start rolling it into a ball. You can roll it into a ball on your hand or you can roll it into a ball using your yarn winder. All right, let's say you accidentally snipped through an edge somewhere and you've got a short piece you want to join, or maybe you want to join a great big pile of it to an existing ball because you're making yourself one great big magic ball of fabric yarn. That is very easy to do. And it doesn't require any sewing, which I particularly like. <laughs> Take the end of one side, fold it up, grab your scissors, and in the very middle, snip a slice, making sure that you do not go over top of that edge. So you'll have a, a little sort of hole, like a buttonhole in the middle end. Then find the other end that you're joining. And again, this can be a short piece or a long piece. Do exactly the same thing with that side. Cut a slice in the middle. It's like a buttonhole and there's a nice little enough at the end that it's not going to accidentally rip through. And then you're going to take either side. I kind of like to go with the side that's unraveled. Open that up and pull this side through. So I'm pulling the side that's sort of the larger side, or in this case, the side that's wound through the side that isn't wound. And then I'm going to just find this either the end or just pieces of it. And I'm gonna just gradually pull this whole thing all the way through the end that's attached to the ball or the larger scrap. And you can sort of find the end and do it that way. See if I can do that. Or <laughs> if you're a little bit impatient, just grab any old piece and just very slowly start to pull it through that hole. And because I just grabbed it in the middle, I'm gonna first pull one side, and then I'm gonna pull the other side, and eventually the end will come out. But ultimately, we want the entire scrap to come through that hole. So nice and easy. I'll grab this side for a little while. Isn't that a nice sound? There's the end. And I'll just keep pulling on this side until the whole thing's come through that space. Even fabric yarn wants to tangle a little bit. <laughs> I can pull that all the way through. There we go. And you're left with your two ends kind of tangled together. If you had jelly bracelets when you were a kid in the 80s, you probably made jelly bracelet chains or daisy chains. It's basically the same thing. And then you can just pull it and you've got a nice little knot that didn't require any sewing or even any knotting. And it's so small and thin that once you continue winding that ball, I've got a little loop here. 
There we go. You're not going to notice it. And because this particular fabric yarn is really good for things like baskets and rugs, and you're using such a big hook to crochet with, or even big needles to knit with, you're not going to notice those tiny little joins because they're relatively thin compared to the size of the stitch that you'll be making. And in this fashion, you can just keep making more fabric yarn and attaching it to the ball pretty much until you run out of scraps. If cutting through four layers of fabric is just a little too much for you, then you can do this instead. You're going to take the same thing, whether it's a strip or a thick square, you're going to fold it in half so that two of your edges are perfectly aligned. So I've just got this leftover strip of fabric. I've cut off the little salvages. I'm going to layer them up so that they're perfectly aligned. Flatten it out. Make sure that it's nice and smooth, as smooth as possible. You don't have to iron it. And where I would normally fold it up again and then snip over top of this fold, but not all the way through here, if that's too much, you just fold it in half. Eyeball two centimeters or an inch, and you just cut through one fold of fabric instead of two folds. It'll take you a little longer, but it'll be a lot easier on your scissors and your hands. And you just snip your way all the way up. Try not to make it too skinny. Two centimeters or an inch. Like I said, if they're a little bit, the thickness varies a little bit, that's perfectly all right. And when you get close to that, that edge where the two flat edges are, stop about a centimeter, a centimeter and a half, half an inch or so away from the top. You do not want to sever the top. So rather than folding it like I did the first time and just making it a shorter section to cut in, this way it's a little bit longer but it's a lot easier on your scissors and your hand. This is especially good if you've only got small scraps to work with. Then you can flip the whole thing around and just like the other one, peel them apart Deal with the top half first, cut the first slice, skip the next one, and cut the next one. And then you do the bottom in reverse or opposite. So instead of cutting the first one, you skip that one, go straight to the second one. And this one only has two cuts because I always want the next one to be at least two. And then I'm going to add this to my ball of yarn. I'm going to fold up the bottom, give it a little snip, grab my other ball of yarn, fold up the bottom, give it a snip, I'm going to take the side that I'm joining and pass the side of the finished ball through it and then you can grab the end or you can just grab it in the middle. What you're doing is you're slowly and carefully pulling the whole thing through and then voila, nice neat and tidy little knot and you roll that into the magic ball. How cute is this ball of yarn? I'm picturing a whole bunch of them lined up on my shelf, just ready for that upcoming basket project. I'm thinking about a basket uh, specifically for pets. Pets and pet toys, maybe they want to roughhouse with it, they want to get into it, they want to play with it. Something crocheted out of something sturdy like this is going to hold up a little bit more than maybe something crocheted out of regular yarn. So once again, if you're going to make this kind of uh, fabric, those are the kind of projects you want to keep it in mind for. Something that needs to be strong, something that might take a bit of a beating, like a rug or a basket. Well, we hope you enjoyed making some yarn along with us today, and 
feel good about upcycling or recycling some of the fabric or other fabric things that you might have in your house. Like, you know, those old sheets or the bed skirt or those curtains that you're kind of sick of looking at. You know, the stuff. <laughs> Give it a wash, cut it up, wind it up, and turn it into something new for you. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.